This is EDUC 4703U, Teaching and Learning, Problem-Based Learning. This is Session 4, Video Clip 4. Title of this video clip is Theory and Structure of PBLOs, Part 4. The analysis questions for this video clip are as follows. Number 1, what does Popperian cosmology try to do? Number 2, describe each of the worlds, in other words, world 1, world 2, and world three. And number three, how are the worlds interrelated to each other? Popper's theory of cosmology is an attempt to explain the universe and how people perceive it and make sense of it. To a large extent, this theory exists in the realm of philosophy and consequently I won't spend much time or energy on it as this course is not primarily dealing with that type of thinking. However, the theory also includes Popper's principles of falsifiability as they relate to the formulation of hypotheses regarding how the physical world works. The following slides will attempt to briefly explain the theory. And if you're interested in hearing about the theory from Karl Popper himself, you're invited to read the address that is included in the theory section of this video clip. World 1. As you can see by the illustration that's given on the slide that's currently displayed, World 1, according to Popper, consists of the physical world. The physical world, then, consists of all physical objects and events, even biological ones. This means that human beings exist in world one. Notice that I did not refer to the real world as it is identified in the accompanying diagram as reality is determined, according to constructivist theory, by the perceptions that humans bring to it, influenced as we all are by earlier experiences and the schema that we construct in our own heads. World two, then is the world of mental states and events or thoughts and ideas. This is the realm of observations, perceptions, as well as psychological states and processes. Essentially, this is the way in which we make sense of the physical world as represented in our memories and in our personal knowledge. World three consists of the products of human thinking. It is in world three that the products of human thinking can be found. These products consist of books, theories, hypotheses, and models, or in other words, technologies using a very broad sense of this world word. Many, but not all, world three creations may exist as world one objects, particularly if the thoughts and ideas had been rendered as a physical metaphor. For example, Written words are collections of symbols that are metaphors for ideas, or a map consists of a set of symbols that represent the physical space that is described by the map itself. How do the worlds work together? World 2 is based on observations of World 1, but World 2 attempts to exert control over World 1. World 3 is a product of world two, but world three is useful as the objects that are produced are knowledge artifacts that can and are used in education and learning about world two and world one. World three is a theoretical construct of world one, meaning that it not only describes, but also attempts to explain, creates hypotheses about um, world one, while world one itself provides the means to test or refute world three hypotheses using our senses and thinking processes, which exist, of course, in world two. Information that is generated in world one is made part of us in world two as knowledge through our thinking about the information. The information, but not the way we perceive it and associate it with other schema and experiences, is recorded in books and other artifacts, which are part of world three. According to Popper, then, Explanatory ideas, hypotheses, should be expressed as conjectures, which should then be subjected for refutation. This is all taken from Knowledge Jump 2010, Karl Popper's The Three Worlds of Knowledge, uh, which is re 
retrieved from knowledgejump.com and I will be giving the URL in uh, WebCT. The address then that we are looking at here is taken from uh, Popperian Cosmology Three Worlds, Karl Popper, 1978, the Tanner Lecture on Human Values, and I will give again the URL um, in the WebCT portion of this course. The synthesis questions then for this um, video clip are as follows. Number one, why would Popper dream up these ideas? Number two, how does world one correspond to the real world? Number three, is the world inside of our heads, i.e. world two, real? And how can you tell? And number four, what is your definition for technology? Not just the digital kind, by the way. And how does this correspond to Popper's world three? These are fairly heavy ideas but I think you will see some of the relevance as we go on to talk about uh, falsification uh, ideas, etc., that are coming up in future video clips.